gas training, how an expansion vessel works. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and we've got Roy, who Roy is a trainer here and he's been a trainer for many years. I've been on many of Roy's training courses myself and he's an amazing trainer. And Roy's gonna go through how an expansion vessel works so that most of us know by now from the videos we've done previously is an expansion vessel is used in a boiler because when water gets hot, water expands at 4% and we need something on the system to take up that expansion. So that's what an expansion vessel does in the system. And Roy's gonna go through um, testing, um, like it's got a pressure sensor on here, there's different types of sensors, and he's also gonna explain to us about expansion vessels. So without further ado, let's go over to Roy. Thanks Alan. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at Viva Training Academy over in Halifax again. And today we're going to have a look at expansion vessels and um, expansion vesseling in a boiler. So this is a little rig. So just to explain a bit about this rig. So an expansion vessel is in two halves. So you've got a section there, that's got air, that comes out the factory and that's got an air charge in there. And we can top that air charge up. And on a service visit, we should really be checking that air charge. Some manufacturers say we should check it every service. Um, some say as and when necessary, but I'll come back onto that. The other side of it, the back side of it, that's got water in it. As you can see on my rig, it's connected into the pipework there. And I've got one or two little things. So this is just a simulation. So on here, I've also got a low pressure cutoff switch. Uh, that's there, so if the boiler loses pressure, it doesn't fire up dry, so it doesn't burn, it doesn't boil itself, it doesn't damage itself. And up here, I've got a pressure sensor. Some manufacturers are using low pressure cutoff switches, some manufacturers are using pressure sensors. So inside there, there's a diaphragm running down the middle, and that's separating the air pressure from the water pressure. So these come out the factory in the boilers, typically. Um, set at a particular pressure, somewhere between 0.8 and 1 bar. Now, an expansion vessel will have a data plate on there. That data plate will give you lots of useful information. It will give you that pressure that comes out the factory set to. So I've just put my glasses on so I can see what I'm, I'm reading. So this particular one on here, it explains its charge pressure is 0.8 to the bar, so just below 1 bar. Its literage is 10 litres, so that's a 10 litre expansion vessel. Its maximum pressure is 3 bar, so that fits in with things like your pressure relief valve. That's a maximum of 3 bar. So if the pressure does get too much, that will start to drip, so relieving pressure. And then its test pressure is tested up to 4.3 bar. Its temperature range is plus 90 minus 10, so we don't really want them at minus 10 because it's frozen. So. I've got a gauge on here and it's set to point eight, round about point eight of a bar, so that's as if this one's come out of the factory. Now, we don't want any water in here, so what I'm gonna do is simulate the water pressure by using air. So I've got my raging pump here. So this is just as if we've hung this boiler on the wall, it's brand new, that expansion vessel's come out of the factory, it's got air pressure in there. So we're going to put some water pressure in. Now typically when I was installing boilers back in the day, I used to charge my boilers up with water up to about 1.2 bar. So I'm going to put round about 1.2 bar into the water side of it. So I'm just going to pump this up. Now what you'll notice is I'm putting the charge in there, the air, which is simulating the water. The pressure on the air side is actually going up because that water pressure is pushing against that diaphragm which is starting to equalise the pressures. So as I get my 1.2 bar in there, and I'm just about there now, what we'll notice is that my air side of the expansion vessel is at 1.2 and my water side is at 1.2, so they've equalised. We'll also notice that my low pressure cutoff switch, which is basically a switch, all it's there to do, if there's no pressure in it or less than half a bar, it goes open circuit. So we can test that on a beep test. So I'm just going to get my multimeter on my beep test and pop it across the two connections there. So what we'll notice 
we've got a beep, so we know that that's operating. Now this other pressure sensor, that's got three connections because it not only measures low pressure, it measures high pressure. So if I go across a couple of connections on there, I've got a reading on that one and I move it round to the ohm scale. Uh, 5.13 uh, kilo ohms. So I can tell I've got some pressure in there. So I'm just going to do now, I'm going to drop the pressure out of it. So what you'll see is this one will come down and that one. So I'm, it's as if I'm draining the boiler down. I'm taking all the water pressure out of it. So the air pressure is coming down as well because we're taking that pressure away. So we've got down there below that half a bar. So if I just check these two sensors again. So I'm still getting roughly 1.5 on that side. If I check the other side, I'm getting 5.8 on the beep test. Nothing because it's gone below the pressure. So what we're going to do now is simulate you guys coming on on the service visit and there's no pressure in this side. So I'm just going to drain the pressure out of it. So all I'm doing is just letting the air out, out through the shredder bar. So I've took the pressure off there. And as we can see, it's going down. Now one of the problems that we can get with expansion vessels, they can get dirt in them. A lot of older systems, before we started flushing, before we started putting filters in there, they used to get blockages. So one of the problems that we can get is a blockage. Now I'm going to simulate a blockage just by turning this little blue tap off so my expansion vessel is not going to be part of my circuit. So I'm just going to turn that off. So I've come along, my expansion vessel, I've got no pressure in, my boiler's lost all its pressure as well. So I'm going to pump my expansion vessel up. So I'm getting my pump again onto this back valve and I'm going to pump this up. Now, generally when I use to pump expansion vessels up, I usually put them to about a bar because when you're taking that pump off, it'll always lose a little bit of air pressure. So I'm just going to pump that up to a bar. So this is my exercise for today. Keep my muscles built up. There we go, let's have a see what we've got. Just a while. I'm pumping him in. So I've got my air charge there. Just about the bar. Pop him off and he stayed at the bar. My water side hasn't done anything. So I'm now going to pump that water side up. As you can see very, very quickly, that pressure's leapt right up there. It's leapt right up. So I've got about one and a half bar in there now. Now what would happen is that that's cold. So when we put the boiler on, the temperature rises and that expands. So what's going to happen there, it's going to very quickly as it heats up go over two bar. And that's because it's not communicating with the air charge. The air charge is just sat there and it's still on one bar. So the boiler starts to drip and it leaks out and then it drops the pressure down. So the customer comes along, turns the filling loop on and it's a vicious circle of repressurizing, losing pressure, repressurizing, losing pressure. So we're gonna come along as an engineer. We've got a customer complaining, it's dripping out the PRV. So the first thing we notice is that the pressure's right up. We've got water dripping out there, so we're going to drain that down. So we drain that down. Before we do anything else, always take out the air pressure. Because we may come along now and we check it with a pump and we're still going to get 
just over a bar on the air side. So we, we might think, oh, the expansion vessel's fine, it's got a charge in there, but we're not communicating that charge. What we need to do is to take it and clean it out. But if we don't take that charge out there, what may happen is that you've got a one bar of pressure behind the diaphragm, inside the other side of it, you've got dirty water. You wouldn't do any connections and the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a jet of dirty water either down you or all over your customer and the kitchen or the cylinder cupboard wherever the boiler is. So we always, before we start removing expansion vessels, just make sure we take any charge out of the air side. That way, when we do undo any joints, any connections, if it's after the blockage, we're not going to flood the house, we're not going to get dirty water splashing all over. So once we get the pressure down to zero, then we can start undoing connections, we can start trying to find out where the blockage is. Now a lot of these expansion vessels are fitted on thin flexible hoses with tight bends on them. That's usually a favourite place to find them, that's where, I, where dirt can sit, can cause issues. And um, that's where it can block up. So it's always worth checking the expansion vessel, particularly if you're getting complaints and comments about dripping out the PRV. The other thing it might be worth, depending on the cost of a new PRV, replacing that, because if it's been dripping for a while, there's a good chance there could be a bit of dirt on that seating. Um, so that's just a quick one on expansion vessels, what to look for, what to check, how to test them, Hopefully you're not going to flood anybody's house or get dirty water down yourself. Um, if you've got any questions, any comments, please put them down below. If there's any future videos you'd like us to do, any other information you'd like, please, please let us know. Um, so that's been me, Roy Fugler at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax, saying thanks very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you very much for that Roy and once again thank you to Viva Training Academy who's putting a lot of time and effort into hopefully helping new recruits, even people that's been doing a job a long time to be honest. I, I always learn, um, always pick up some tips when I'm doing these type of videos so you know it's all good. Um, so yeah thank you to Roy, thank you to Viva Training Academy and if you've got any questions please put them in the comments below. And one thing I will say is always refer to the manufacturer's instructions because things change and manufacturers sometimes change things. There's sometimes have technical bulletins where they might tell you something different to what it previously said. So always check and always refer to the installation instructions. Thanks for watching.